And then you gently let go of the hands you're holding. And you bring your palms together in front of your heart center. Taking a few deep breaths. Being aware of the ground beneath you, it might be a chair or a sofa or the floor. Being present to being held and supported. Asatoma Satkamaya Tamasoma Jodir Gamaya Metroma Amritam Gamaya Aum Shanti Shanti Shanti. Inhale deeply and suspend your breath. And then we exhale. And we slowly open our eyes and we bring our palms, our hands onto the knees and the palms facing upward. We take four segmented inhalation through the nostrils one exhalation through the open mouth. And when we exhale through the open mouth, I like for you to wiggle your jaw a little bit to release maybe some tension that you're holding there. So it looks like this. Four segmented inhalation. Yeah, the hands go up towards your throat center. And then the palms facing down when we go down and we wiggle our jaw, exhaling through the open mouth. If you feel comfortable, just close your eyes. And be present to that each inhalation opens you up a little bit more to life. Three more repetitions. Last one. And then rest your hands onto your knees, straighten your spine, be present to the energy inside of you right now. Regulate your breath. Good, and then we open our eyes again. We bring our palms forward. On the exhalation through the open mouth, you round your spine, you tuck your chin. Inhale, bring the palms back facing forward, exhale round. 
I inhale through my nose, exhale, open mouth. And Shelly, you can do the same posture without moving your torso. You can inhale here, exhale there. So you're not engaging your neck at all. I want you to have an emphasis on the exhalation here so that you make a lot of space for your inhale. Most people don't exhale enough. And then the stale air stays in our lungs. And then the lung space gets restricted. And it will be harder to inhale. And we if we collect a lot of stale air in the lungs and we have less lung capacity, we face more anxiety and more depression. Let's do three more. And when we come to center, we bring our hands into the lotus. The heels of our hands are touching the tip of our pinkies and the side of our thumbs. On the inhalation, you extend your arms, palms facing outward. Exhale, hit the heels of your hands, touch the tip of your pinkies and the side of your thumbs. So it's like. And Shelly, don't hit hard. Yeah, the hitting hard could have an impact on your throat. I want you just to touch. Everybody else, hit as hard as you can. While you do this posture, I want you to experience how you lift your diaphragm slightly. And the flexibility of our diaphragm is crucial for our breathing. Always come back into the lotus. The lotus is like the mudra, the hand position for our heart chakra. Last three times. Good, and keep the lotus in front of your heart center. Inhale through the nose, exhale, open mouth, and feel the exhalation in your palms. Good. Now we hook our pinkies into each other. All of you can do this posture. Yeah, so hook your pinkies into each other. The other fingers are bent down. The thumbs are pointing upward. So what I do, I have a tension here as if I want to pull my pinkies apart. So this will work on your adrenal glands. 
And then we in and exhale through the open mouth. Just for a minute. Well, the adrenals are connected to how much stress we experience with the outer world. And I want you to breathe it out right now. Continue to pull. So this is a good thing to do when you feel a bit stressed. Take a deep inhalation. Suspend your breath, close your mouth, pull your perineum, sex organ, navel in and up, squeeze your entire body as tight as you can just for a moment. And then exhale, relax. Rest your hands onto your knees, palms facing upward. And take a deep breath here. And then we are ready for Namala. Thank you, Sidi. Okay. Today. First, I'd just like to welcome the new women, Barb and Donna, who are with us today. It's so lovely to see new faces and know that we're going to be sharing the journey with women who have different experiences to bring to us and um, just to deepen and, and expand. It's as though we're creating a web. I look at this gathering as a matrix of all of these intersections of these dimensions and levels at which we're sharing and we're deepening. And the more that come into this grid, the more, um, the more it's like an intricacy, like a delicacy of all of these little fibers and pieces, and it makes a more um, exquisite tapestry. So I'm just very excited. Thank you for taking your morning and joining us. So today it's kind of an odd topic. So I need to tell you that I don't think too much ahead about what we're going to talk about. Sidney and I do discuss a theme so that we can be in concert with one another. Um, however, I was traveling all day Thursday and Thursday late. And so we didn't really chat until yesterday. I just started thinking about this. So I don't always know why something comes to me, um, but I wait until it does. And so today we're gonna talk about self-violence, self-violence, um, because it's an under, under acknowledged and a misunderstood action that we may subtly partake in and not even recognize it. Um, it's something that is insidious in many women's lives because we are always uh, in a state of absorbing other people's opinions and energies and direction and guidance and it can undermine our own sense of intuition and knowledge and the sense that we have the best um, direction that's already inside of us. But we listen to all of these outside things. Shelly mentioned that in our check-in, which was very um, in line with what I want to speak about. Um, generally, we do not label self-judgment, self-assessment as violent. We consider that an improvement. We're improving ourselves. We're looking for new ways to be receptive and in awareness. And, and that's all true. That is true. We are in that. But it's the edge, it's the knife's edge of where as we're looking at self-improvement in ways we might change, that we're subtly telling ourselves we're not good enough where we are in how we're behaving and how we're responding. Um, and it's really important that we separate out 
the self-improvement from the self-judgment. So when we're looking to improve ourselves and train ourselves, we'll say, I want to become more patient or more thoughtful or less judgmental. We have many attributes that we say, I'd like to take that attribute and to incorporate it into who I am. And yet each time we say this, we're diminishing the fact that we actually have the capacity for that. We're saying to ourselves, we're chipping away and saying to ourselves that that divine spark that we keep talking about that is already in us is somehow not shining. And in order to own the qualities that as women we each carry, we have to believe that the capacity is already, already inherently part of us. And we just need to live into it each day. We're not out searching for anything. You're already whole. You already have the pieces inside of yourself. The tools and the guidance that City and I share are simply um, distractions, honestly, in many ways, because you already have all of this, but we're looking for ways that it might bring your attention to how to tend your body and how to attend to your psyche and attend to your thoughts. Ways to make it easier, tools to make that easier to reveal that which is already a part of you. What happens when we say the, the three most damaging truths that we hold about ourselves are, I am not good enough, which translates into, I'm not good enough for anything. I'm not good at, if you say, I'm not good at this, I do some things well, but I'm not good at that. That translates into, I'm not good enough. Or I can't do, blank. I can't do this. I do that, but I can't do this. That translates into my capacity is limited. Or I don't deserve blank translates into I am unworthy. So it's very subtle. But when we diminish ourselves in any way, we are stripping away the layers of ourself that hold this potential. And I know in the spiritual world, there's a lot of talk about humility and um, diminishing, just dissolving, not carrying forth an identity that's so strong that really we want to merge into the unity of all that is. So we want to stop being separate from. But I'm not talking about separate from, I'm talking about living into the capacity that is the light and brightness of our being. We don't have to shout it from the mountaintops, but we have to live into it. If we have the capacity to be the bright light that helps other people in their journey, and we don't do that because we don't want to shine so much or maybe bring attention to ourselves, or we don't believe we have it. Each woman on this call has the divine spark and light in her to be able to lead other women and other families and other community members into their capacity if they're not feeling that they are centered in that capacity. We have it. When we believe I'm not good enough or I can't do that or I don't deserve something, when we believe that those untruths then develop into fear, guilt, and shame. And I'm quite certain most of us can find places in our life where we're either holding fear or guilt or shame. And none of those attributes or qualities are, help, are helpful in our journey. If we want to live into the fullness of the essence of who we are, we can't carry fear, guilt, and shame. Whatever has happened in your past, whatever you are bringing as the, the baggage of your life, we all have that. That's simply the way our lives are constructed. Everybody brings the fullness of their lives and very few people have a life filled with just joy. Most of us have some things that we're bringing that were challenges or that are current challenges. But if what comes out of that challenge is I can't handle it, I'm not good enough, I'm not strong enough, I don't have the resources, then we're not using the tools that are around us and in us. So I ask you, where in your life are you not allowing yourself to own the version of you that is expansive and beautiful and great and capable. Self-violence is a very subtle 
and very insidious action. You will find it so subtle that you might think many of you on this call may say, well, I think I'm doing great. I don't have any problem. And then listen to ourselves in a conversation where someone gives us a compliment and we say, yeah, but I'm not real. I'm okay at that, but so-and-so is better. Or yeah, I can do that, but I can't do this. Or we don't receive, often women do not receive compliments from other people with graciousness. We try to deflect. That is a self, an act of self-violence. We have to learn how to receive compliments from people and allow that to be part of the fiber of who we are, that it's not incorrect to say to someone, oh yeah, I can do that, but I don't really do everything. I can only do that one thing. Look at yourself, listen to how it is that we are deflecting from ourselves in our life rather than taking the credit for and acknowledging the beauty that we're carrying already. It's something to really pay attention to um, in your life because I will say that most of the damage that is done to us in our lifetime is done by us to us. There are outside forces and there are situations in life that are extreme and that happen and that have happened, but ongoing, who's with you all the time? You are, you are. You have to be your best champion so that you can live into the essence that you already are, that you brought with you. And doubt and criticism and judgment are not helpful. They're not helpful for us to live into the strength that we have. Asking questions, asking for assistance from somebody that you trust is great. It's great. We need to do that. That's why we circle. That's why we come together. That's why we come side by side. We walk the journey with one another. But self-doubts and self-judgment and self-assessment in negative ways is not helpful. How do we turn the assessment into an opportunity rather than allowing it to be diminishing? I'd like to, if I respond in a situation in a way that feels like it's sticky inside of me, and I think I would rather next time do that differently. That's very different if I say that to myself than I say, okay, you did a really poor job of communicating in that situation. This was really unpleasant. That's a way of diminishing myself rather than looking at the opportunity. Okay, I witnessed that. I witnessed that I'm not, I wasn't able to hold my patience and my tongue and I wasn't able to contribute what was really called for. And when we're in self-violence, we are not capable of offering the fullness of who we are. Self-care requires that we tend these very, very small pieces that seem insignificant in the passing through our day in our speech. The speech is the most important way that we offer ourselves into the world in terms of um, something that the general public can hear and experience. How we use each word is the most powerful thing that we can offer. We offer our words and our heart into, into space, into the community, into our family, we're also offering that to ourselves. What you hear yourself say, your thoughts take to be truth. You say it, now there's a thought, there's a whole belief system around I'm not good at. Or life has, has offered up to us in this last year and a half, a very different scenario. And I'm sure all of us have stories to share about how challenging it has been. How many of us are, championing ourselves and saying, wow, you really handled this year and a half well, even though it was very challenging. We need to be championing ourselves for the beauty at which we are able to navigate unsightly situations and unpredictable um, scenarios, which this last year and a half has brought. We should be bowing down to ourselves for how we've been able to navigate this last year and a half. I know every one of you have done a beautiful job in this very difficult situation with families and travel and finances and it's endless health. And there have been so many health issues within this group in this last year, big ones, not small things. 
big things. And in a time when we didn't have the flexibility to come and go and to have maybe even the same health care that we wanted. I mean, we've been challenged in taking care of ourselves and yet you have. And yet you have. This is a, an amazing group of women who have the capacity to do anything you want into the world. Do not limit yourself by self-violence. Do not limit yourself by judging which things I'm good at and which things I'm not. Allow yourself to try everything. Now is the time in our lives, in the age, in the age that we are, it's the time in our lives to, to search out ways that we want to be inspired. It doesn't matter if you're good at something, try it. It doesn't matter if you've had experience, try something new and allow yourself to be just adequate, whatever that means. Because we're each bringing a brilliance to the process. It's the process that we're allowing ourselves to deepen and grow and experience until we experience different ways of being creative and inspired into the world. We're limiting our access to our own, our own capacity. The divine expresses itself in many different versions of capacity, creativity, awareness. You have your own niche where you are your truest essence and where that essence is expressed. You might be a teacher, you might be an artist, you might be a connector of people, you might be a soulful, supportive friend, a steward of the environment, a lover of life, a reliable friend, a calming and loving presence. You may be all of those things. Are you reminding yourself of the ways that you are beautifully contributing into the world? All roles are as vital as the next role. There aren't better or worse roles. This is an hierarchy that we have created in a culture where we give credit to certain things and we diminish the value of other things, other ways that we can offer into the world. Some we consider better and some we don't consider at all. If we look at nature as our guide, we know scientifically if we have the um, extinction of a species, a specific species, that it affects, there's a domino effect. It affects the entire um, health and vitality of our planet. It's not just that one thing was there and it went away. It's interconnected to everything. And whatever its contribution was, whether it was food for something else or it was cleaning up the uh, oceans by taking in something, ingesting something, whatever it is, it had a purpose that was part of the whole. You have a purpose that's part of the whole, both within your family, your community, and with the a global perspective. Living into that purpose, living into that capacity, living into that brilliance that you're bringing is how we live out of self-violence and into self-care. Your exact DNA is needed to fulfill the destiny of mankind. Your exact DNA is needed to fulfill the destiny of mankind. Without it, there's a hole. You represent something that's so important that for us to get to the, the healing of this planet, it's gonna take us longer if you don't live into your capacity, if you self violate and say, I'm not good enough. I can't do, I can't try. That's too big for me. Nothing is too big for you. Nothing. Failure is the best ladder we have to success. Failure is the best ladder we have to success. You fail at something and you're resilient. You look for other ways to navigate. That's survival. That's how we learn to do things in a different way. If we never failed, we wouldn't keep advancing. We would just stay in the same place. Try things that are outside your comfort zone. Allow yourself to do something just okay. Just maybe it's the middle of the road. Allow yourself the possibility and the potential to tap in to the fullness of who you are so that you can offer that into the rest of mankind and humanity. Our healing for the planet is predicated on us stepping up and doing what it is that we can do. And it's 
so much bigger than we imagine. Some of you on this call might be thinking, well, I really don't do, I really don't do that. I pretty much accept my strengths and I, you know, I'm, I'm okay. I'm delighted for you if that's how you're doing it. That's beautiful. But still, this week, I want you to watch what happens when people compliment you or when you have an experience of something not, you aren't able to successfully complete something. Something happens and it's, or somebody offers you a suggestion to do something and you think that's a little outside my comfort zone. Why would we ever say that? Why would we ever say, I'm not going to try something because it's outside my comfort zone? Instead of not trying it, expand your comfort zone. We want to be the light that we came in with, not a, not a tiny bit diminished, but the fullness of that light that we came in with so that we can live that into the world and share it with others. It's your responsibility. And it's done in so many different ways between you know, parenting and offering stewardship to the environment and um, hosting people in your home to share food and, and camaraderie and support. It comes in all different ways. There's not a better, bigger, or more important way for you to show up in the world. You just have to show up 100%. 100%. I'm going to leave us with um, a poem that I love that people attribute to Marianne Williamson, but it was actually the 1994 inaugural speech by Nelson Mandela. I'm sure you've all heard it, but I keep it on my desktop and I think you should as well. And I'll post it for us. Our deepest fear is not that we are inadequate. Our deepest fear is that we are powerful beyond measure. It is our light, not our darkness that most frightens us. We ask ourselves, who am I to be brilliant, gorgeous, talented, and fabulous? Actually, who are you not to be? You are a child of God. Your playing small doesn't serve the world. There's nothing enlightened about shrinking so that other people won't feel insecure around you. You were born to make manifest the glory of God that is within us. It's not just in some of us, it's in everyone. And as we let our own light shine, we consciously give other people permission to do the same. As we are li liberated from our own fear, our presence automatically liberates others. So take this week and liberate yourself and allow yourself to be the fullness of who you are because you are a spark of divinity. Thank you, Namala. Beautiful. So there's a very simple hand position or finger position. You know, then when fear, doubt and insecurity comes in, your hands actually can help you. So you take the thumbs on both hands and you place them on the outside of your index fingers in between your first and the second knuckle. We're just simply on the outside. And all the other th three fingers are at ease. They don't have to be straight. Yeah, they can be slightly bent. And you just press here between the first and the second knuckle of your index finger on the outside. And then you can rest this hand position onto your knees, palms facing up. And I invite you to close your eyes. This, this finger position increases your self-esteem. Yeah, and if we are in fear, doubt, and insecurity, that's exactly what's missing. I want you to inhale and mentally, just mentally recite, I am. And on the, the exhalation, you mentally recite, enough. I am on the inhalation. Enough on the exhalation. Mentally reciting I am on the inhalation. Enough on the exhalation.
We're letting go of the mantra. We're letting go of the mudra, the finger position. Just following our breath. And then we bring our hands into prayer pose and we close the session with Aum Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. Aum Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. So we will be with you on Friday morning at 8.30 for those that join the prayer circle. And for those that are new this morning, you will receive an email with all the information. And then we see each other again next Saturday. Have a beautiful week. Namaste.